right now on Upfront. On the hot seat. You know, we are in unprecedented territory. Wisconsin's top election chief in the political crosshairs, 16 months from the 2024 election in one of the most closely watched and contentious states nationwide. The state Senate is con committed to following the law and restoring faith in our elections. This weekend, Senate Republicans looking to potentially fire Megan Wolf. Democrats saying not so fast. Our guest this Sunday, Wisconsin Elections Commissioner Ann Jacobs. Then the Republican presidential primary debate in Milwaukee. Will former President Donald Trump show up? And in many ways, I'd love to, but in other ways, it seems foolish. Now Wisconsinites weighing in, new polling on the state of the race. Poll director Charles Franklin is here to break it all down. And his final act. It's a good thing, but you have to keep up. Summerfest's longtime CEO in the midst of his final festival. Don Smiley's new insight on the increasing competition to book the biggest gigs in music. This is Upfront with Jaron Jordan and political director Matt Smith. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. A dramatic escalation this past week surrounding the fate of Wisconsin's top election chief as preparations for the 2024 election already underway. Megan Wolf's term officially expiring this weekend. Republicans attempting to force a vote that could lead to her removal and Democrats now fighting back. Surgeon staff is distributing the resolution. After hours of budget debate late Wednesday night, to need to have a partisan caucus. In a surprise move, Republicans who control the state Senate quickly pushing forward a resolution to eventually force a vote on whether to fire the state's top election chief, Megan Wolf, which Republicans may have the votes to do. No, this is a complete and unexpected curveball. Republicans forcing the move despite a day earlier, the Bipartisan Elections Commission deadlocking on a motion to reappoint Wolf as administrator, a move Democrats on the commission attempted to block the Senate's ability to act. And Jacobs is the Democratic Commissioner with the Wisconsin Election Commission and former chair. And welcome back. Good to see you on the show. Happy to be here. Uh, let's look forward for a second. Uh, I'm curious from your perspective, what is next? Are Democrats or members of the commission going to try to stop this Senate action? Um, what I think is next is the commission's going to continue to do its work. Administrator Wolf is going to continue in her role. And we're going to watch this um, interesting sideshow continue. It sounds like they're going to call a hearing in the Senate Elections Committee, most likely September, unless they call a special session. Does she have to show up for that? Um, my understanding is she can be invited. But the answer to my mind is why would she go when she is the administrator and there's nothing to uh, have a hearing about. This all bubbled Wednesday night in the state Senate. Senate Majority Leader Devin Lemahieu on the floor. Let, let's take a listen to some of his comments. The Democrat appointed members of the Wisconsin Elections Commission abdicated their responsibility to vote on the appointment of the administrator and Ms. Wolf's appointment passed unanimously on a 3-0 vote. Wisconsinites across the state and from both parties have loudly and consistently expressed their discontent with the election processes both in Wisconsin and nationally. Our constituents deserve and demand consistency and certainty in the administration of our elections. The Commission's antics of repeatedly withholding administrators from the Senate confirmation process will further diminish faith in our elections. I'm curious from his comments, why take this strategy from Democrats to abstain, knowing that it could have provoked something like Republicans did on Wednesday night in the Senate? The statutes that govern appointment of an administrator in the Wisconsin Elections Commission are very clear. And they begin with the clause, if a vacancy occurs. Quite simply, under the law itself, a vacancy hasn't occurred. And that's not just something that's a, a political view. It, it, it's a statement of the law. Add into that the Prane decision, which governed the holdover of DNR member uh, Frederick Prane, and those two things combine to make very clear that the commission doesn't have the authority to nominate anyone unless they remove the existing administrator. There weren't the votes to do that. Certainly, uh, the three Republicans who voted to approve her make that clear. So the commission couldn't act, and abstention was the right move to reinforce that fact. This was a strategy, to, though, to prevent the Senate from acting, right? Um, well, I imagine all votes are strategies, but in this case, um, it, it appears that the goal was to sort of ignore that law, nominate her, and then allow her to be rejected. And I think that would have been an unfortunate strategy on some of my colleagues' part. I think the right strategy was to acknowledge she remains the administrator, she hasn't been removed, 
there's no vacancy to fill, no nomination to be had. We'll talk about that Supreme Court case in a second. I'm curious broadly, though, how keeping an election official now in her post beyond her term improves confidence in, in the state's elections. So one of the challenges with election law here in Wisconsin is the conspiracy theories that have swirled around every aspect of our um, elections. But you have to keep your eye on the prize. And what we need to do is have a well-run, accurate election in 2024 the way we did in 2020. The way to do that is to maintain the strong leadership Megan Wolf has had. It's not to bring in some novice or random person off the street to run the Elections Commission. So I think that needs to be at the forefront. We need to keep our leadership in place. This has gotten complicated and messy. There's a lot of pieces to this. Let's talk about the state Supreme Court decision. For those who don't know, you mentioned the Pren case that involving the former DNR board member. This court said he could stay past his term and that an expiration doesn't create a vacancy. Democrats at the time tried to force him out. Josh Call said this is not a country where we have kings, but Dr. Pren apparently gets to choose how long he gets to stay on. Is this now okay for Democrats in, in this case? Um, I will be the first one to say I think praying is a terrible decision. I think the idea that people don't leave at the end of their term is really a bad idea. Isn't that what Megan's doing, though? It's not, though. And this is where I think it's an important distinction from the DNR case, which is, in Fred Prane's case, there wasn't the language I just went through with you, which is if a vacancy occurs. That's a little different. And I think it makes sense in the context of elections because you really don't want people stopping their job in July if you've got an election that following year. So continuity is more important in the Elections Commission, and it has that specific language. And I think that's what makes it a little different than Prane. Are you using that case, though, to bolster your argument? Um, I think the Prane case makes clear that you have to start with the language if there is a vacancy. Prane directs us to the statute that defines vacancy and says expiration of a term alone isn't sufficient. Did Megan Wolf want you to take this approach? Um, I don't presume to speak for her or at her behest. This is the position that I have come to through my analysis of the law and for what is best for the Elections Commission in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, who's going to file the first lawsuit in this? Oh, that's a coin flip. I have no idea. Uh, any members of the commission will be part of that? Um, we tend to be sued a lot, so that's possible. We um, would you file? Would you consider filing suit? Um, I wouldn't rule out the possibility of that, but my hope is really that we all acknowledge the law is the law and proceed accordingly. Ann Jacobs, Democratic member of the Wisconsin Elections Commission, former chair, and thank you, like always, for your time and perspective. Thank you. Let's bring in J.R. Ross, editor of WisPolitics.com, our editorial partner. J.R., good to see you. Hey, thanks for having me. So let's just talk about what happens next with all of this. How soon, or, or could this even get to a confirmation vote? Uh, good question. So the legislature is basically recessed until mid-September. Now, you can come back in special session and do things. Committees can meet in the meantime, but the next floor period is in mid-September. So gain this out a little bit. If the Senate comes in and votes on Megan Wolf, let's say it's in late September, then it creates a window of 45 days, if she's rejected, 45 days for the uh, there to be a vacancy for the a legislative committee to come in and, and appoint somebody. Now you're talking like late October, mid-November, less than a year out from the 2024 presidential election, months away from the spring primary that includes a presidential primary. There's a real time crunch here that sets up a lot of bad optics for Wisconsin about confidence in our elections and who's running them, depending on how this plays out. Now, if this does, if this did get to a confirmation vote, uh, does the Republican-controlled Senate have the votes to remove Megan Wolf? Devin Lemme, whom Julia has said, number of times that she will not get confirmed it goes to a floor vote republicans have had megan wolf as the boogeyman for lack of a better word for the last three years to say she's to blame for what happened in 2020. let's think about this for a second if republicans were somehow to be successful in the various court challenges that might come up if they appoint somebody on interim basis to run the commission if they were to lose a 2024 election in wisconsin who, who do they blame then it's their fault for their base who believes elections are, are flawed and, and all these things it'd be their person who would be the one to blame for how things run. Now, granted, it's not with the minister who runs things, it's the election commission. The commissioners vote to do things, but it'd be their person in place. That's a, how do you make that argument to your base of, well, yeah, we picked somebody and they didn't deliver for us. J.R. Ross, editor of wispolitics.com. Always great to have your insight and analysis. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. 
Up next, new threats from former President Donald Trump targeting the first primary debate in Milwaukee. Now, Wisconsin voters are weighing in. New polling is out, and poll director Charles Franklin is standing by.